Inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. I've got a quick bonus episode of the podcast for you today. So there's some breaking news in the mortgage market that is actually very good news for us as investors. Joining us on the show today to fill us in is Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. So Chaley, what's the news? I'm, well, I'm almost giddy about this, Dan. Um, I'm super excited to be sharing with your listeners. We got an announcement from the GSEs, Government Sponsored Enterprises, aka Fannie Freddie, that they have reversed or rather suspended uh, a cap or a, a limit risk layer to non-owner occupied and second home occupancy. Let me just take a quick second and go backwards and inform those listening um, from a definition perspective, and then I'll bring it home. Um, You know, mortgages are securities, specifically mortgage-backed securities. uh, And the most common of those for real estate, residential real estate investors, are bought and sold by Fannie Freddie. Conventional Fannie Mae Freddie Mac is where many of the clients that we, we work with Um, that's where they're getting their funding from. So when you think about it from that perspective, Fannie Freddie loans that are the mortgage-backed securities are insured, meaning they are guaranteed by the United States government against default. Um, That's the exact reason that we have rates as low as we do on 30-year fixed mortgages. Okay, so that's an important thing to understand. The other piece to this that I wanted to lace in here Um, that most people are not aware of is that since COVID, the United States Treasury has been purchasing mortgage-backed securities, Fannie Freddie, to the tune of about $40 billion a week. Wow. I said week, okay? So clearly they've got some some, um, skin in the game, right? Mm -hmm. With that came what is called a senior preferred stock purchase agreement. All right? So yeah, the Treasury has a lot of weight to throw around And within that preferred stock agreement, they back, and this is back earlier this year, they imposed straight through the GSEs Fannie Freddie by saying additional risk criteria on the loans that the Treasury is acquiring. They wanted to limit the acquisition of single family mortgage loans that were secured by investment property and second home to a maximum of 7% per aggregator. Now, it's important to define that. Per aggregator means, as an example, let's say I have $10 million worth of loans that I'm going to sell to this one aggregator. We have dozens of aggregators that we can sell to. But if I've got a bundle of $10 million that's that's being sold to this particular aggregator, no more than 7% of those could be for second home or investment property. So for us, it didn't limit how much we could close for investors. But what happened is, is that with that announcement earlier this year, when they put that limitation on there, um, the secondary markets and servicers said, "Uh uh-uh, wait a minute, that's really going to change things. And without getting too far into the weeds, the long and the short of it is, is that that announcement created a significant increase to rate. A lot of people listening will probably remember that around that early March time, rates were in the low to mid threes and they jumped up to, you know, the low to mid fours. Almost a full percentage point was the the reaction of that news. It was a big deal and it was overnight. Well, just recently, Wednesday, we've got the reverse to that. They have suspended that rule and we saw almost immediately uh, the improvement of those interest rates. Now, it'll probably continue to, to trickle down in the days and weeks, but I am um, anticipating at least a half a point improvement to rates. So we should be back in those mid threes, maybe, you know, 3.3 to 3.75 for investment properties very, very soon. That is great news. And so you think the rates are going to come down more from where they are right now? Absolutely. Yeah, we're running somewhere in the, on average, 3.875 to 4.375, right, based on the characteristics of the loan. I think that we're going to see a good half a point from within that range uh, here, you know, literally by this time next week, probably. That is great news. All right. So what can we do today to prepare for this? If someone is maybe looking to refi or they're looking to maybe make an offer on a property, what can we do right now to make sure that we're, we're set up so that we can get, get a rate lock as soon as the rates do come down? Yeah, they want to get, if they haven't already, they want to get pre-qualified immediately. 
um, get all of those ducks in a row so that when it comes time and it's viable to lock in an interest rate, they can do so at a moment's notice. Awesome. Well, if anyone wants to reach out to you, if they want to talk to you more about this or they're ready to, to lock in a low rate, what's a, a great way for someone to reach you? Yes. Um, the standard places, guys, uh, you can find us on our website, ridgelendinggroup.com. You can email us, info at ridgelendinggroup.com. And then finally, please feel free to call toll-free 855-747-4343, 855-74-RIDGE is that easy way to remember. If you've been thinking about buying another rental property or if you've been thinking about refining forever and you've just never gotten around to it, it sounds like we're about to have a really good opportunity. So make sure you take advantage of this. We don't know how much longer these lower rates are going to last for, but the rates sound like they definitely are coming down. Well, thank you so much for listening today. I'll be back with a regular interview tomorrow. My name is Dan Lane, and this has been a bonus episode of the Rental Income Podcast.